Today we're talking about the highly anticipated Hourglass Holiday Collection. Each one retails for $90. And I know what you're thinking, $90, why? Are they worth it? I've got all the details to help you decide. Indoor and outdoor swatches, every single shade applied to my face so you get an idea of what it looks like on. You want to see all of the bronzers from all three palettes swatched side by side so that you can see the tone differences. We're gonna be doing that. And trust me, you won't want to miss the value breakdown because I'm gonna do all the math for you so you don't have to. So grab a snack, sit back, and let's do this. The name of this collection is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Collection for Holiday 2023. It features three limited edition face palettes, each with their own unique packaging illustrating and animal as you can see i absolutely love the packaging so we have a jellyfish we have the leopard and we have the snake each one comes with its own color story and even though hourglass doesn't say this on their website but it seems that the jellyfish palette is for light skin tones the leopard palette is catered more towards medium skin tones and the snake palette seems to be designed for deep skin tones. If you're like me, you're probably wondering whether you can pull off the snake palette. Well, do not worry, we will find out because I will try all of these shades on my face. Now, let me know which illustration is your favorite down in the comments. For me, the owl case was my favorite. Now, the owl case is the only empty case, meaning that it doesn't have a corresponding set of shades. You select any one of these color stories and you can have it come inside the Owl Compact if you wish, but that's only if you place your order on the Hourglass website. And even though the Owl packaging is my favorite, I didn't get it because honestly, I didn't want to confuse you guys and put one of these color stories inside the Owl packaging and then you'd be wondering, wait, so which color story is that? It would just make things confusing for you and for me, so anyway. Now, the thing with these palettes is that even though they are limited edition, not all of these shades are brand new. A lot of them already exist as permanent shades within the Hourglass line. Now, that could be either good news or bad news, depending on how much you have already invested in their products. Let's take a look and see which colors are new. We get three new colors inside the Jellyfish palette, only one for the Leopard palette, and five in the snake palette. And I think you'll agree that a lot of the hourglass blushes look the same when they're applied to the cheeks. You have pinks, you have a little bit of mauve, but overall they're very similar shades. Whereas here with the snake palette, I am seeing super vibrant pink coral shades. All right, let's get into what we've all been waiting for, the swatches. I filmed B-roll of each shade in both indoor and outdoor lighting, so we will get to see each one in its full glory. And here we can see the bronzers, all of them side by side. These, the one at the bottom, the snake palette, definitely has more red in it. The leopard one in the middle is the warmest and the jellyfish on top has more of a neutral tone. Now here we have all of the blushes swatched side by side. I think that the jellyfish and the leopard blushes look pretty similar on the cheek. The leopard does have that one really saturated pink, whereas the jellyfish doesn't. The jellyfish blushes are more muted and softer. And um, you can see that the ones from the snake palette are definitely quite vibrant. And here I brought in swatches from last year's elephant palette. 
Here we can see all of the highlighters side by side. The tones are quite different. The one at the very top, the jellyfish, is described as a pale rose gold. Then the leopard one is a warm rose. And the snake highlighter is a warm gold. And here we have the highlighters once again, indoor lighting. Oh, okay, yeah, and I brought in the elephant highlighter here to see it side by side. So as you can see, it is similar to the one, to the snake palette, but not as deep. All right, so those are all the swatches. Now let's move on to the demos to really see how these shades perform and how they look when applied to the face. Yeah, because you'll definitely want to see this before making the $90 commitment. We're going to get started with the Jellyfish palette, and I was really curious to see whether these shades were going to show up on my face because, like we said, we think that this is aimed at lighter skin tones. So let's take a look. Here I'm starting with the bronzer. Honestly, I had to layer it so many times because the pigment just wasn't showing up. And even though it did end up looking good once I layered it on, I don't want to be wearing that much powder on my skin. It's just unnecessary. So this shade is not for me. Now I will apply both blush shades, one on each cheek. This first one is called Rose Fusion. It is a cool mauve tone. And here on the other cheek, I'm applying the other blush, Diffused Heat, with a MAC 168. But it does have fine glitter particles. It's very delicate glitter, but you can still see it. Hopefully, I was able to capture that on camera. And if you're looking at both cheeks after the fact, they look quite similar. So again, the main difference here is that one of them has some glitter in it and the other one doesn't. Okay, moving on to the highlighter. This highlighter is no joke. This is intense. It's called Opal Strobe Light and it's a radiant pearl. If you like a beaming highlight, you're gonna love this. I personally don't. I prefer a more subtle highlight, so I had to be very light-handed. I did one cheek and I realized it's potency and so I went with a lighter hand on the other cheek. All right, moving on to the leopard palette. I'm gonna start things off by applying the bronzer. This is not a new color. It's called Lustrous Bronze Light and it's described as bronze heat. It does have the most sheen out of the three bronzers and also if you remember the side-by-side -side swatches of the three bronzers, you can see that this is the warmest of the three. So here I have it all over my face. I like this bronzer a lot better than I did the Jellyfish just because this one does show up on my face quite quickly. Now I'm applying the blush in the shade Mood Exposure on my cheek and this is like a plum brown hue according to the website. And as you can see, it took a while for it to really show up on my face. I had to layer it quite a bit. And on the other cheek, I'm applying this second blush called Iridescent Rose. This one does have a little bit of glitter in it. I didn't mind it one bit, still a very pretty shade of pink. I just finished applying the first two blushes from the Leopard palette, so both marble shades. And Mood Exposure is supposed to be, it looks matte, whereas Iridescent Rose has more of a sheen. But the colors themselves, does it look to you like I'm wearing the same color? Now I'm gonna do the third one from the Jellyfish palette. It's this one, this one called Ethereal Flush. I'm going to just layer it on top of the other two. And I think this is quite pigmented. Yep. Nice pigmented pink, all matte finish. This is the most pigmented out of all the three blushes in this palette. So this is what ethereal flush blush looks in on both cheeks. It's a pretty pigmented pink. So because it's highly pigmented, I'd say this shade gives this palette an edge just because it's um, it packs more of a punch pigment-wise than the other two blushes. So I was happy to see that there was not another third subtle pink blush 
in the palette. Now moving on to the highlighter, this is called Celestial Strobe Light and it's a soft gold. What I liked about it is that it's not as intense as the one in the Jellyfish. This is definitely more to my liking because it's subtle. You can certainly build it up if you want, but at least you don't have to be scared of it when you're going in with your brush, you know? And finally, last but not least, we have the Snake Palette. And I haven't told you which palette I'm wearing on my face. I will tell you later on. And again, just like with the first two palettes, I started by applying the bronzer. It is called Solar Bronze and it's a deep amber. Now this one, I expected it to be too dark for me and it wasn't. And it confused me since this palette seems to be designed to cater to deeper skin tones. Yes, I did have to be more light-handed with it than with the other previous two bronzers. Yes, I got more pigment uh, faster, but um, I thought it was gonna be a no way this is gonna work out for me type of thing, and it wasn't. It did work. Now I'm moving on to the blushes. Let's start with Coral Haze on one cheek. This is a pink coral color, and as you can see, it does work on my skin tone. It's not too pigmented. I used a fluffier brush as opposed to a dense one because I was being cautious, but as you can see, it does work on my skin tone. It's not too pigmented. Now on my other cheek, I am putting on the Sunbeam blush. This is also a new shade, but this shade gives you a lot of glow. It has like a metallic finish, so if you have texture, if you have pores, it is going to accentuate them. I wouldn't use it as a blush, maybe as a bit of a highlight, even though it does have a pigmented base. Honestly, I don't think I would reach for it at all. I find the finish to be quite metallic. And the third and last blush in this palette is called Mystic Flush. It's a mid-tone pink. And what I did is that I took off the other two blushes. I started with blank cheeks here and I put on Mystic Flush on both cheeks. And this blush compared to the first one, Coral Haze, they look very similar as well. The, really the one blush in this palette that has a more distinct look is Sunbeam, but the other two look pretty much the same once they're on. Now we're gonna do the highlighter for the Snake Palette. I mean, it's usable. Now, if I had to pick only one palette for myself, which one would I buy? I'm gonna have editing me pop the answer right here because I would have to look at the footage side by side. I imagine that it's between the, the leopard and the snake. I want to see the three finished looks side by side. So editing me, please place all finished looks side by side here and, uh, and tell me which one you liked best. So there you have it, the nitty gritty of how these shades look and perform. All right, now let's talk about something we all love to dissect, the value. Is it worth the splurge or is it a save your coin situation? Let's find out. So at first glance, you're looking at this $90 palette and you can't get over the sticker shock, right? However, when you break it down, these palettes offer a much better value, much better value in terms of cost per gram compared to the mini size of the shades that Hourglass already has as permanent shades in mini size. Now, we're talking about $10.71 per gram in the palette versus $21.54 per gram for the individual minis. So in the palettes, the cost per gram of product is almost half. So far, this is starting to sound like a great deal. Now let's not skim over the fact that you're getting a different selection of shades in one palette. You have the bronzer, the blushes, the finishing powders, and the highlighters. That's like getting a full face makeup kit 
inside one sleek case. Especially when you're on the go, when you're traveling, or when you want to just streamline your makeup routine, that's a plus. However, and this is a big however, are you really going to use all six shades? Because ultimately value is not just about cost effectiveness, it's about practicality and utility. If you love every shade and you see yourself using them, this is a no brainer. On the other hand, if you see shades that you know you'll rarely use, then the cost per gram thing becomes irrelevant. If you're going to love all the shades that come in the palette you want, you got yourself a deal. So there it is. Every shade, every swatch, every sparkle, every cost breakdown. Now it's up to you. Save or splurge. Let us know in the comments. If this review was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss any upcoming reviews. And you know that more reviews are gonna be coming left and right because it's the season, the busiest, most exciting season. I love it. I, I love when we are approaching the holidays. It's only the end of September right now and my husband was already talking about, should we put up the Christmas tree? But no, then we decided let's just wait till Halloween is over. So the day after Halloween, Christmas tree is going up. All right, you guys, that's it for me. Until next time, bye.